Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, it's part three of the Jira Spoke Projects videos and I'm going to do the user fix that I talked about in my last video. I'll link to that up here um, in a link to that video. But in that video we did, uh, we've created, or in the previous video we've created a project. In the second video we updated a project. And in this video I want to change the way that I'm handling the user situation. So where we left off when I did an update project I hard coded the user information into that which is never good. Never want to do that. And for the create project, the first video, I did this look up all users and I had a filter on there to search for the project manager on the project record and it could possibly get back one or more users. And I didn't really like that either. So what I want to do to handle this correctly is we're going to actually create a table in ServiceNow and that table is going to house two things. One is going to be a reference to the user table and the second will be a reference to that Jira account ID and then we're just going to populate it once a day with the flow and then that way we can access it much more easier than making a call every time we need to look up a user. So let's go ahead and make that table. We'll go to system definition and I'm going to make the table from there. I usually do things inside of App Engine Studio but in this case uh, I want to stay in this part and just get this done quickly. We're just going to call this Jira users. I'm going to keep it really simple. Jira users just like that. That'll automatically populate that. I don't want to create a module or anything because I can get to this using the table name there. Um, but I'll go ahead and save that and like I said we're going to have two columns in this one. It's going to be a reference to the user table and then I need that lead account ID. It's a, it's a sys ID or a GUID. Um, we're going to actually store that in a string on this particular table. So let's go ahead and create that column for um, the reference to the user table. All right, there's my new one. We're just gonna call this a reference there. And we got to label that. It's gonna be user and we'll label that user. And then our reference specification is gonna be sys underscore user. And that's good, there we go. So we're gonna reference a user and that's gonna be definitely mandatory and definitely gonna be our display value for this particular table. Uh, so let's go ahead and submit that. And then the last field that we need to add to this table is gonna be the uh, Jira account ID. So let's go ahead and click new. This will be a string. We just need to store that value in here. So we'll do string Jira account ID and we'll set the max length to 40. This will definitely be mandatory and it's not going to be our display and we don't need a default value for this. So we'll hit submit and that's it. I've got everything I need to do now in order to create a new flow that in theory in production maybe you want to do once a day if you have a lot of user movement. Um, I'm probably going to do this in my PDI like maybe once a week, once a month. It's just me and my PDI uh, but your mileage is going to vary depending on what your needs are. So let's just go ahead and create a new flow. We'll just call this um, uh, lookup well actually let's call this sync Jira users because that's what we're doing. We're bringing the Jira user information over to ServiceNow. We'll leave this in my Justin's house application, hit submit, and one of the triggers that we can have for our flows is actually scheduled. So I'm just going to do this weekly and we'll select on Wednesday, um, which is tomorrow. Sure, 9 p.m. is fine and then hit done. And then our action is going to be that Jira action to look up users. All right, here we go. Let's search for Jira down here. Didn't take as long as the last time, but still took a little minute. And we should have a user management section uh, where we don't have a lookup user, but we have a lookup users plural, um, which I'm actually okay with now because that means less uh, lookup users stream. I'm not going to actually filter or search. I'm just going to grab all the Jira users. So we're going to leave the query blank. And then for each one of those, I'm going to see if they already exist in the user table. So we're going to look up a record in sys underscore user. There we go. And we're going to match on the email address. So let's just type in email. So if the email address is matches what we got in the lookup user step, uh, there is their email address. Then we're going to go ahead and create a record in that table that we just created. So let's go ahead and create a record. All right, so if you remember, we named that table Jira users, so we should be able to search to Jira users, and that can sometimes happen, all right? I even put this on my clipboard. So what's happening here is I've created a table in the system, but I already had this session of Flow Designer up and running, so I'm going to cancel out of that. We're just going to save our work so far on this flow, 
and I have some other tabs open at the top. You can see in there, I'm just gonna close all of those out so we don't have to refresh all that stuff. And now I'm just gonna refresh Flow Designer. You can't see me, I'm hitting the refresh button in my browser. And because I close all those tabs, all it's gonna do is reload this one flow. And now I should be able to go action and we're gonna look up um, or actually we're going to create a record in that new table. I'm not going to lie to you, this is taking ridic ridiculously long to pull up the menu there. Um, so we want create record, let's go ahead and let our table load. I like that they're putting this little indicator here. So while it's like this, this square, um, it's still loading all the tables in the system. And when it turns to something like that is when you can actually use it. And if you want to make it move faster, uh, let me move my head out of the way. You can hit this done and then kind of reopen it and it'll do like that where it's actually ready to go. So there's a tip from Justin, unsolicited. There's my new table, Jira users. We're gonna set the user reference to what we just looked up in the previous step. So let's go ahead and look up record. There's the user record. And then for the Jira account ID, we have that in our loop. So we're just gonna grab that from the for loop there, users, and then we should have the account ID and hit done. And so the idea is we'll run this once a week. You may wanna run it once a day. We're gonna populate this, this new table with that information. And now when we're running our other flow that's doing the create or update, we don't need to make a call to Jira just to get the user information because we're already gonna have it in service now. So let's actually look at the table. Let's view the list here. Uh, show list, and I should have one record at least. Now I got a bunch um, and no user information. Oh, great, great. So it didn't find my email address, which makes sense actually, um, because why didn't it find my email address? It should be in there. Hmm, what could have gone wrong? Let's check out the history on that. Um, no record found. Ah, I see what happened. No record found, no record found. So it never found a user record um, that matched my email look up email address all right well my email is in there so it should have found me at least because we know that worked in the previous one um so it's pulling back nine nine users look up user where email is and then oh did i look up my own no let's make sure that's correct this is going to be in the for loop data pill Look up users, the user, and the email address. So that should be valid. My email address is over there, so it should have found a match. And it's not finding a match. That's interesting. This should generate a bunch of nonsense. So we should have 16 records of no users. Yep, that's what I'm expecting. There's me on the bottom. Nope. I am 5E96. So where's 5E? There I am, right there. And let's see what the history was. That was like fourth from the bottom. Maybe it's the same order here. So look up record, email equals blank. Do any of these have? So that's the service account, that aired out, and then everything else had a blank email address. So is, am I even getting a list of email addresses? That's the pagination config, so I can't look at the results. That's annoying. Response body. All right. Um, email address blank. Email address blank. What was mine? 5E96. There's my account ID email address blank. All right, I'm here a couple days later. I had to work on something else, so I'm gonna cut out the time in between, but I wanna come back and see why my email address wasn't showing up when I was doing this lookup user stream. The percent obviously got me a wild card to pull back more data, but I still wasn't seeing what I needed. So what I did is I clicked on this open action uh, link that would open the action in Action Designer. And in Action Designer, I'm able to test it, right? So I was able to test it. And when I test it, I could open up the execution details and I was able to actually look at what came through. So this is the JSON object of all 16 people, right? Because it starts with zero. Yeah, zero to 15 or 16 people. And I noticed for mine, there is no email address. The email address said no. So I went back over to Jira. And in Jira, um, let me show you where I was when I 
started. I was on this page. I just went to my user menu and account settings. I am the admin for my account. This is all under my email address. And I noticed at the very, very bottom, it said contact and it had my email address. And it said, who can see this? And it was set to all admins only, only you and admin. So I changed it to anyone. It warned me it's visible to anyone who can view your content and it's accessible by installed apps. Well, guess what? I think I know it's not an installed app, but I'm thinking the integration just could not see my email address because of the setting. So once I saw that, I changed it, and um, it says it takes a minute for it to do it, and I was like, oh, I should record this, and that's how I ended up here. So let's go back to my uh, test here, and I want to test it again with you guys live. So we're going to close that history there. We're going to run the test, and now I'm hoping my email address shows up in the list of results that are coming through. All right, here's the big moment. Let's go ahead and pull up that payload and see what came through for Justin. And what do you know, that fixed it. So now I can see my email address. That's what I wanted in order to create my users on that table that we created. So now that I have that um, coming through correctly, let's make sure my logic is correct for when to try this. So we're gonna try looking up a user record where the email is the email address. And I think I wanted it where the email address isn't empty either. Um, that was important because I saw the in the table itself, um, they were coming back empty. So let's go ahead and open up that table. I'm just gonna search for, uh, oh, that's right, I didn't make a menu item for this. So let's go to tables. It's been a day or two since I did this, so I need to go find that table name. Uh, I'll shorten this up for you in post. Okay, I got my table name. I'm gonna open up Jira users, and I'm gonna click view list on this, and it should show me all the people it's found so far. Uh, if I had, didn't delete it the last time we were doing this. Yeah, so I didn't purge it out. So let's go ahead and purge that. We're going to delete all of those. And I shouldn't have any empty users. But what I do know is true is that the Jira is passing null values for email address. And I know there's users in ServiceNow that have null values for email address. So it's probably finding the first match and linking them together. I don't know why there's not populating an actual user record, but let's see if we can work around that. So we're going to look up a record um, from, why is that not showing? Done and go back into it. Uh, not back into that one, back into this lookup. There it is. Now use this user table and where the email, I wish I had, is not empty. All right, so let's get rid of this. We're not going to look for a match there. We're going to look for is not empty and the email matches. So it is what we see in our lookup user stream. So the user's email address. So it shouldn't be empty, it shouldn't be null. Uh, is null an option? So it's not empty and is anything contained, is empty, is not empty, is empty string. Um, okay, so is not empty. I'm going to leave it like that. I think that's what I had before. Uh, but let's go ahead and save that. And if that's true, we're going to create the Jira user users record. Um, so that's the user in the table. We're going to drop in the, the user side of it, the sys ID of the, the record we looked up here. And for the Jira account ID, we're going to drop the account ID in there. So let's go ahead and save that and we will test it. All right, run finish. Let's go back to our table, hit refresh, see if we've had any better luck here. Oh my goodness, finally, it finally worked. Okay, so because of those changes, now I have my Jira account ID linked to my user record. All right, so this is critical, critical, critical for fixing our flow. So if you had more than one user, I'd expect this table to build out with everybody in, in Jira and link them to their account and service now. So what I can do with this now, when I sync my Jira users is, um, actually no, when I sync my Jira users, this is just gonna run, right? So this is gonna run on a schedule every Wednesday at nine o'clock. In fact, let me go ahead and activate it because this can run forever and ever and ever and I don't care. Um, if there's an error or whatever, notice I left my try catch, my catch is empty, there's nothing happening there. I don't really need to do anything um, if there's, if they're not able to find a record. But, so let's go now to my project sync flow and let's fix the user situation there. In the first video, I used a for loop, we're gonna get rid of that. And in the second video, I hard coded my account ID, which you never, never wanna do, that's bad practice, bad, bad practice. But I didn't wanna make a longer video. So this is the loop I should be able to get rid of now. So from else, um, if the Jira project is already created, we're gonna update it, and instead of hard coding my ID there, we're gonna grab it from that table. So let's see if we can dot walk our way there. We're gonna go to the trigger, 
I'm going to go to the project record, and from the project record, I want to look up the project manager. So there's the project manager. And from the project manager, I want to get to that Jira users table. Let's see if it's that easy. Nope, it's not that easy. Um, let's see here. How am I going to walk to that table? That's okay. Um, that's okay. So I can't dot walk my way there because I'm not storing a reference to the Jira table in my user table. The whole thing in here is I'm not wanting to modify the out of the box this user table. I don't like doing things like that. Maybe you would. I don't want to do that. So I can't dot walk my way there, but that's okay. I still don't need to make a rest call to Jira to find that ID. I can just do an internal lookup and find that ID. So let's do that instead. Let's look up a record and we'll look up a record in that Jira users table. I'm getting really impatient with that floating the actions. It's like ridiculously long. Okay, but we're gonna look up a record here and I'm gonna look up a record in my Jira users table. So there we go. And we're gonna set where the user uh, or the sys ID, it's not sys ID, sorry, the user, Jira account, where is user? There it is, user. Um, we'll actually check the sys ID. So the sys ID for the user that's referenced in that table matches the project manager's sys ID. So let's scroll down to project manager and they're close, 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 close. Gosh, darn it. I wish I could get there faster. You know, I could type it in and sys ID, it should be before the T's, there's sys ID. So we're gonna look up in the Jira user table where the sys ID matches the project manager, and then when I'm updating the project, I can use step number th uh, step number two, look up record, Jira users record, and grab their Jira account ID and put it in there. Okay, that, I fixed that, you know, not mistake, I did it on purpose um, because I wanna save time in the video, so that's good. Let's save that. And the next thing I want to do is fix this loop down here when there's not already a project created. I'm trying to get away from making all these rest calls every time a project is created or updated to look up user information. So I definitely don't need to do that. But before we create the project, let's go ahead and do the same thing we did here. In fact, let's just copy this action. We'll duplicate it. And then I'll drag it down to above the create project. So now I'm doing the same thing there. Didn't have to repeat any of that. And now we'll just get rid of this for loop. And when we create the projects, and when we set the project lead account ID, uh, we don't need the flow variable anymore. We're just gonna go to step number five, look up record, Jira uses record, and grab their account ID. Um, for the project lead name, I don't need that anymore. Now we know it's actually useless if you saw my other videos, but just for fun, we can go to um, the trigger, the project record, the project manager, and just grab their name from that field. Uh, project manager, and then scroll down to their name. This will make no difference what's all its account ID that actually matters uh, that that happened. So now that's done, let's clean up our flow variables since we don't need those anymore. So I'm gonna delete the lead account ID and the project lead name, uh, use an action three and six, that's fine. Close, what was three? Update project, project lead. Okay, so we'll just do the same thing there to look up the project manager's name. There we go. So we've got it out of step three. Step six, I think I already took it out of. Uh, I took it out of there again, so let's put it back. Trigger, project record, project manager, and project manager name, which is right here, which is me. All right, so done. Um, and then the update project record, that should all still work the same. Step number six is the create project ID. So when you when you change the order or when you add and insert steps, you wanna go back through your flow and make sure all these numbers are still accurate, right? So this doesn't say four or something crazy. Um, I've seen that happen before. It hasn't, hasn't happened since I upgraded, but you never know. And this is the project URL, so that's good. So everything looks good there. We are ready for our two final steps of this third and final video of how to sync your projects to Jira. We've got a better user situation going on, which I'm happy about. Let's go ahead and activate. Do we want to activate this? Mm, I'm going to leave it inactivated because I really don't need this running. I'm just showing you on how to do this. But let's go to a project. I'm going to actually go to the PM underscore project table dot list and let's find a project um, that we want to go ahead and sync. So let's do recycling and waste management. I'm going to change this to Justin Meadows so that that syncs over. 
uh, hit that and that should save the project. We'll go ahead and open it because we're going to come back to this and change the name and everything. But right now there's no JIRA project for recycling and waste management. Let's just double check the facts on that one. Uh, we'll close my account settings and go to JIRA uh, software, I think it is. And then I should be able to see all my projects. I'm already on all my projects. So there they are. Leave of absence is the one we've been demoing. But now we're going to do this new one. So let's go back to service now and recycling and waste management. We're going to run and test our flow for recycling and waste management. This first time we run it, since that project doesn't exist in Jira, it should do this else box down below because it doesn't exist. So it's going to create the project in Jira. That's the expectation there. Let's go over to Jira and see if that has happened yet, even though the flow is still running. I'm just going to hit refresh on this page. And it did. It's already there. Recycling and waste management. We can see the project name, the key, and it's assigned to myself. Let's open it, see if we've got a description. I can't remember what the description was. Um, let's go to project settings. Where's project settings? Projects, recycling and waste management. Oh, come on. The settings were here last time. Uh, back to project. Project settings. All right. Details. Project description, oh, created based on the PMI approved project template. All right, it's all there. So now let's go back, make sure that description matches. Let's change this, recycling and waste management um, YouTube demo. We're changing that, and let's change the description. Um, we finally have a fully functional workflow, exclamation point. Let's fix that with a capital D W. We'll save, and we'll test our flow again. And when we test the flow again, we are expecting that it's going to hit this section now. If the JIRA project's already created, it's gonna look up the JIRA user record, it's gonna update the project, um, and, uh, oh, I'm just realizing, um, <laughs> my action to update the uh, JIRA project is missing. No, is, or is that it right there, update JIRA project? I think that's right. I don't know why there's a service now logo on it, though. That's what threw me off. Um, and that's probably because I put that in my um, own scope instead of putting it in the, the JIRA spoke. So let's just uh, stop freaking out, Justin, and let's go look at the um, JIRA summary, JIRA project summary. We'll flip back and forth like we've been doing and see if we have it. Yep, it updated. There's our YouTube demo piece of this. There's the updated description. It's still assigned to Justin Meadows, and everything worked as we thought it should. So if that is a better way to manage your users, I hope you found this third video helpful, and hopefully you, if you've done this, you can go clean up the way you're managing your users. If you like this video, please like, please subscribe, or share with somebody who you think might be interested in syncing projects back and forth between ServiceNow, Projects, and Jira Projects. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.